Test. Is that working? Hey, perfect. Thanks, guys, everyone. So this was uh, a little technical issue we, we faced with the Beamer. So for the ones who have a presentation with a Mac, I would really take the time to test it. Um, um, it was very interesting to have the talk before, the keynote, um, about the Batayon 42. I did not choose that, but actually that is deep thought. That's the computer who gave the answer to the universe, life, and everything. So it's more a coincidence. And I wanted to talk about how we've built uh, one of the most secure media companies in the world. So this is a quite bold statement, but I still believe that's the case. So afterwards you can roast me if that's the case or not. So don't hesitate, ask questions as much as you can. My name is Andreas Schneider, I'm the group CEO of TX Group. So for all of that in the room, who doesn't know TX Group? Are you from Switzerland? Yeah? Okay. So, TX Group. Um, TX Group was founded somewhere 1890 around. It was the Tagesanzeiger. So, Tagesanzeiger, that's in 1893, the Tagesanzeiger was founded and the first uh, newspaper in Zurich was printed. Somewhere outside of Zurich, today it's more or less the Zurich city center. Um, and that's where we came from. So it's a media company, a newspaper company, but it no longer is. So now I'm, I'm, yeah, it's working, fantastic. Just need some time for the for the Wi-Fi. So today we are a multi-brand company. So most of the newspaper in Switzerland belong to our group. So whatever you read, you most likely read something uh, from our brands. But we have a lot of other things. So. There is up there, you will, you will see that the SMG, for example. So whether you buy something on Ricardo, Tutti, if you go to Car For You, if you look for a flat on Homegate, you will end up um, at TX Group. If you have, um, for example, that new neon-free app for banking, it's more or less also part of us. If you look for a job, it's jobs.ch, is also part of our group. So we have an ecosystem of many, many brands, many digital companies. If you make an appointment via Doodle, if you watch TV with Satu, it's also um, TX Group. So it's no longer a media company. Still, we call it like that, but uh, we are not. So what I will talk about are a couple of principles that we apply to make everything more secure. The one is the Thanos principle, not Google Anthos, it's Thanos. For those who are not in Marvel things, I will explain what this means. Very important, we love pictures. And then there is a Grogu principle. It doesn't apply anywhere, but we just love Grogu. Uh, we really love him. Um, but we love the cloud. That's more important. So we are a cloud company, and I will explain what that meant for security, and Groot. So Groot is also important. And the crucial thing, if you go to the cloud, is we love code. Everything as code. Today, even you can do um, security policies as code. So code is one of the most important things that changes everything, especially infrastructure as code. It's a fantastic thing. So let's start right away. I know from for the, those in the back, it's super small. On the upper left side there is 2015, and this is how the security stack looked like in 2015. Even if I click, there is nothing. So you could type in the easiest password you could remember, even shorter than every other system in the world, it was accepted. So there was no security at all. Um, there was no real security organization, but the company applied the Thanos principle. So Thanos is the one, the evil guy, snipping with these infinity stone things and removed half of the universe's population to solve most of the problems. Our company did the same, not with the security in mind, but we went to the G Suite instead of Microsoft. So we abandoned Microsoft Office and with that we got rid of 50% of all security problems we had, even if we didn't know that we have them at that time. So... Um, that was a bold move, and it helps us today as well. So, and it makes it off very hard for pen testers to, for example, do phishing because it's just not working like that. It's often very difficult. So, the Thanos principle can be applied also to other things. 
like do you want to use the Adobe Reader or something else? Um, you can look which technologies are attacked most often and just choose an alternative. Sorry, Microsoft. Even if you do good products, it helped us a lot. But that's it from 2015. Let's move on to 2016. Um, even without security and 50% less of the problems, well, it was just a matter of time that something would happen. So this was a famous incident at, at 20 minutes that kick-started security and kick-started more or less my career at TX Group. So um, this was the time of malwaretisement. So malware was distributed for everyone who visited 20minutes.ch. And we reach about 80% of the Swiss population per week. Even if I know that no one would say I would ever read 20 minutes, 80% will do that. Um, and then they removed the malvertisement, and then it appeared up again. So I was in another company, and we were blocking 20 minutes. So this was a huge damage, and the management was like running in circles. Oh my god, please solve that issue best in one week or two weeks, and then let's forget about it. And as everyone knows, that's not working. So, But it's more or less kick-starting security, and that was fantastic, because our management had to learn, no, there is no way you can solve such an is issue if you can type one, two, two, three, four, five, six as a password and have no security at all. So there has been done a big audit. Um, they found out terrible things like you can imagine. And they followed the advice that we have to set up security correctly. So really correctly. So not reporting to a CIO, CTO. Do it right uh, and uh, really do it right. Give the competences and budget. But this takes time. So I was not there yet. So there were the first initiatives like doing password policies. But the next year, 2017, it's, uh, it, I had to put Grogu somewhere, but it was the year of the cloud where our company decided to go cloud first. And something that we did always quite well is if we decided to go somewhere, it's like rushing into that direction. It's really insane pace. So we went to the cloud, cloud first. And this is just an example how the front ends of Targets and Tigers, so all paid media or 20 minutes on a high level look like. So it's, uh, it's on Kubernetes uh, with auto scaling, cloud front and AWS Waffen front. So this is usually how many things are built in our company. And underneath you see that you have all the uh, comparable how many CI CD pipelines look like, but we have everything as code. And this is a big thing because in an old world, uh, there were many manual tasks. Tasks, if you have infrastructure as code, are pull requests, and you can check that. So you have to formalize every change you do. Even if you try that in an on-premise environment, the cloud, if you do infrastructure as code, it, it forces you to do that. So there was no security there. But as we rebuild everything, it was immediately much more secure. So the move to the cloud, rebuilding in the cloud, made everything more secure without having security in there. And I said, we love infrastructure as code because you can do a lot of things. You can scan that like every code and can, can find flaws in there and you can automate things. So, but it's not just the front ends. There was also the back ends. Everyone was like, Ooh, let's go to the cloud. It's such a f fantastic thing. Even if you go to HomeGate, they said, ah, these IT guys, they do containers. We will go serverless completely. So they are running actually really only on Lambda functions. It's only functions, only serverless. That's fantastic. Uh, and then there was cloud like everywhere. Everyone was doing cloud, moving everything. So on-premise data center, forget that old stuff. Everyone was on AWS except Ricardo. They went for Google because they are different. So, and this represents like technical teams. We have like so many different environments that look completely different, but everything is as code. So let's move on. Um, next year was the year of real, uh, where we really kick-started security. The first one is the TX Editorial Cloud. It's again not security, but we moved our CMS for producing um, real newspaper to the cloud. So we were one of the first that really did that. So everyone can work with its AWS AppStream in the cloud just with a browser. So this was 
almost revolutionary, I would say. Then we moved uh, to Zenedge as a DDoS protection system. Doesn't exist anymore. It's still called Zenedge, but it was a product of DIN, a fantastic product. And as we moved away from Microsoft, uh, we had to find a new IDP, so we went for Okta. And I know there was a breach, so you can ask me later about that breach. I'm happy to answer that. And we introduced uh, our SOC as a managed service. We were too small to do that by our own. So we partnered with Kudelski Security to do that, and I was hired. So that's uh, actually me. I already didn't have any hair. So I have two small kids, so sorry for that. And when I joined, I my boss said, hey, do the right things. We fully trust you. Do it right. What you think is the best, we fully trust you. You have the money, the competences, executed what you think is the best for the company, and do not look for compliance. I said, okay, I'll do that. So I tried to focus on detect and response, removing boundaries, um, resilience, and agile. So and I'll explain what this means. Our SOC looked like that. We had a log rhythm, see him on premise, on premise as a cloud company. Um, then we feeded it with all the log sources we had. You see also AWS, Okta, EDR down there. And we did vulnerability scanning. And in the end, we had a SOC team that was doing all the triage and all the work. And this was fantastic because it helped us really improving and getting to a much higher maturity. So let's move to the next year. And our company is, like I said, we are really quick in deciding and removing things. So we decided to remove SAP. So we looked at a cloud only and cloud first. We looked at SAP Sapana for our HR and finance system. And we went as one of the first or the first customer in Switzerland to Workday. A SaaS product with all the problems that come with that, but we had that bold move again. Uh, so I could forget about attacks against SAP that just no one understands with that language. So no longer our problem. This, the next thing that we did, we uh, moved, uh, we partnered with Cyber Reason, that's an EDR vendor, and introduced that everywhere. Uh, in my experience in the past, I worked with Sysmon, uh, Splunk, and we tried to rebuild that. But sometimes it's much easier and quicker, if you want to have pace, to just take what is there. And we have the constraints that we have printing centers. So who has a Cope Supercard? One. I don't believe that. Everyone has that crappy newspaper that you get weekly and you don't know how to get rid of that. But this is also printed in our printing centers. The ANSET set, our competitors, printed in our printing center, the blick to everything. And the printing center consists of state-of-the-art technology like Windows XP and these kind of uh, operating systems. And so we had to find an EDR that's also running on Windows XP. So it's not that easy to find that. We also uh, introduced LastPass. Um, I don't like the product very much, but it has a good feature that we can SSO because passwords are a problem of our of the whole internet. And if you then explain people, you know, now you have next to your password a super master password, you have to find a super random key. So this is this won't work. So we have chosen LastPass because we can use Okta as SSO for the for the master key. So this was, was really helpful. We introduced digital shadows as a darknet monitoring and the colleagues here from SCRT that did a lot of audits and found a lot of fantastic things, I have to say. So one thing is when we introduced the EDR, we also did the audits and here, Sergio, you see that maybe it's not you in person, but uh, we got you. So during the audit, uh, we found that you try to do some injection with Metapreta and so on. So we detected things very early and this was really fantastic. Honestly, if you don't have MS Office anymore, you don't find that many things because it's just disappearing. Um, but we still have that, like this one. We have finance people who have to work with Excel for some strange reasons. So we, we still have office installations. And this is from last year. That's the Hive group. 
that uh, visited us and tried to somehow do something. So we, we found it, isolated the machine. The guy called us, hey, somehow something is not working anymore. Yeah, we isolated your machine and we solved it very quickly. So EDR helps a lot and raises the bar for everything. And then 2019 was the year of the visions. So uh, I always I knew from my past experience that Microsoft and Google are working in a zero trust architecture uh, environment. So they have different approaches and I just love Google. So I looked at their academic papers and technical white papers to be on call. Now they have a product today, but in 2019, this was no product. They just did it by themselves. And the idea is that you have your identity provider that checks the the device context on access and your identity context. And it's no longer relevant where you are. So your geolocation, um, your network is no longer the decision maker. It's the identity provider, so it's Okta. And this, we came up with that idea So and, and thought, okay, if your client has EDR, then everything will be fine. But how do we do that? So this was the concept and we tried to sell it uh, with that picture so that's we were Tamedia at that time so we were we got rebranded um, this is Franz Bürgi our CIO and the idea was everyone loves astronauts there's just no one who hates astronauts so everyone loves astronauts and it should show that you should be able to work anywhere at any time with any device in a secure manner even in space so um, we thought it's a nice picture. So, and actually, people understood it. It's the only thing. It's just internal marketing. And the next thing we were starting on was shifting left security. So, bringing security to the left side, but especially to the developers. Uh, so, you have different names for that: AppSec, DevSecOps. How you name that? Push left. We call it shift left. Today, it's in our strategy and just called product security. Very boring, but product security is better understood by the board. So we work together with many different teams to build up a, a DevSecOps um, principles and way of working. So, and then there was 2020. Uh, who knows that logo? What is it? TechCrunch, yeah. So I thought it was the beginning of 2020 that we bought TechCrunch. I thought, that's amazing. That's the company I have to want to work with. Then I thought, oh, maybe they bought us. But actually, no, we just got rebranded like that. And when I initially saw that, I thought, oh, it's looking like that. No, it's not. But it's an amazing work of the creativity company we had. It actually looks like TechCrunch, but we were rebranded no longer. Uh, like Tamedia, the newspaper, and they really wanted to say we are a tech company. Um, if you find irony that I like the logo, we can keep it here, but it's uh, our new logo. But with the logo, a lot of changes came. So we really said we will be tech driven. So this is a strong message because um, we said we will also go cloud only. And with a cloud approach without Microsoft, we had to find a way uh, with our SOC. How do we do that? We wanted to have that in the cloud. So we decided to not continue working with uh, Kudelski and do XDR, the buzzword of the universe. But we actually run XDR, and I will explain shortly what this is. Then we started really having a proof beyond Corp, that's that BC logo. We Sadly, for SCAT, we shifted more doing continuous audits and crowdsourced audits with Detectify and Bug Crowd, so we do bug bounty programs. And then we had a 32-day DDoS attack while I had a little newborn son at home, and this was one of the most amazing experiences in my life, I have to say. So this was fantastic. So let's dive in. I'll skip the first one. This is the wrist house. We have a development team in Belgrade that also develops security tools for us. I'll skip that. So this is for those who have, has anybody ever worked with Gartner? Yeah. So it's, I copied the hype cycle of Gartner, but it's, they all always look the same. But if you look at XDR in the, in the beginning, you think it will solve everything. 
So even even your personal problems at home will be solved. Then you realize, uh, no, it doesn't work at all. Nothing works. And today we are somewhere here. So it's through a realistic phase what XDR really can do. Um, but what we do is we have it cloud driven and cloud only. You could say some kind of modern CM in the cloud. And we have connected most of our log sources. So from the last on-prem firewalls we have, but mostly AWS, Google Workspace, um, Okta. That's good. If Okta is breached, it's good to have some kind of monitoring there. And the EDR. And we can cross-correlate. That's the magic. So if we find something like the Hive group is coming by, we can find out the whole story. So did it come from an email? And who else received the email? So we can semi-automate a lot of our playbooks that we have. That's XDR. That's the official uh, a draft, for uh, official uh, blueprint for Beyond Corp, how we do that. Um, and there is a little element uh, added that's the mobile device management. So we, we migrate all the clients from domain joint to mobile device managed. That makes lateral movement really hard for hackers if there is no domain anymore. The second thing is we still have a network, even if it's not there, but you have a client access. But we activated device isolation in the client network, so peer-to-peer -peer communication is no longer possible. So if you have a compromised client in our network, it can't access uh, someone else in the network. There's only north-south communication possible. So uh, we implemented all of that, and Okta is the decision maker. And it's no longer the SOC, it's the cyber reason XDR more or less that is our SOC that is collecting all the log files. Actually, our board of directors understood that picture. So uh, I was happy, so that's why we continue with using that. And if you go to our portal and order a new computer, um, like the one that did not work, so my Mac did not work, sadly, here, but you get that MacBook Air Beyond Corp. And it's the cheapest device that we have, cheaper than a Windows computer. So, But you get all these Beyond Corp devices in our store. You can ship them home. You unbox them. They are pre-joined. EDR is deployed, and you're ready to go. So this means it's no longer a traditional client engineering work. So the big challenge is not the technical part. The big challenge is you have workplace engineers who suddenly have to work in a completely different way. So this is the big change that we did. And then we started our bug bounty programs. And uh, until today, we paid out almost $300,000 for more than 250 vulnerabilities. Um, and this is, uh, I would say, quite. For us, it's quite a lot. Uh, it always depends on the size of the company. But if we look how we do that, so we have several bug bounty programs. You see on the top side, we have private programs where we um, start with uh, private access for limited amount of researchers. And we have two public programs from 20 Minutes and Tamedia. So if you go to Targus and Tiger, 20 Minutes, Belong, whatever, it's all in the public programs. And the private ones, are some are quite huge, some are uh, at the beginning. Um, if you look how we do that, usually we start with a limited scope. Then we ask SCRT to do an audit. And then we immediately onboard them to our bug bounty programs. So meaning that we make uh, with the same scoping, we start with the uh, continuous scanning that we do with Detectify. We connect that with our bug bounty program. And then we start with 25 researchers then double the researchers after a month, double the researchers, double the researchers, until we have like 500 researchers. Then we change it to a, to a it's called joinable program. It's, still, it's semi public. So researchers can join it, but they see, they don't see that this is 20 minutes. And we can make some limitations that researchers really need to be, have credibility and so on. And afterwards we go public. Sometimes we increase the rewards before, sometimes afterwards, this, this really depends. So this is what we do. And I mentioned Detectify, so we have a crowdsourced web scanning. And with that, we, um, we scan that continuously, so all the time. Every time a vulnerability is found, um, 
it triggers a webhook that triggers a lambda function. The, the finding is collected and pushed to the corresponding bug bounty program. The, the good thing is that if someone finds a path traversal vulnerability and it has been already found by Detectify, we don't have to pay for it. It's a duplicate. So we get rid of the low hanging fruits and we don't have to pay out low hanging fruits. Otherwise, the worst thing is if you have to pay it twice. If a researcher finds that and then you find it in your, in your scanning, you think, screwed, I have to pay the, him out. And it's worth less uh, that we scan it. So that's how we implemented it. Quite simple. And then the, the best finding we ever had uh, was that one. So what is that? Uh, I, I can hear the whispering. So it's, it's, looks a little bit like there's a script in there. I, yeah, there's some script thing in there. That is changed. I changed that. So you don't see the reUL. So this is script code. So it's cross site scripting more or less. But it's just within the user agent. So, but with that, the researcher could do that, get that. What is that? For the more techy people looks a little bit like cookie information. And this happened at the end of the year. Um, it's quite small, but the researcher crafted that uh, user agent and just tried it out. It did not work. He didn't get a response. But we had a DDoS attack. So we are in the middle of sleepless nights. I was looking really terrible. Um, and we were looking at the log files to find out patterns from the attackers and adjust our DDoS rate limiting and everything. And we asked our vendor, please help us do the same. We wanted to be sure that we don't miss anything. And the log file module in the WAF had that cross-site scripting vulnerability. So if you were looking at the user agents, it triggered the cross-site scripting vulnerability. And um, the researcher gained access as partner admin. So it's not just us affected, but all customers from him. And I thought, oh my goodness, this is so bad. So I hope that no one else will find it. So this was the worst thing we found. Actually, it's out of scope, but we accepted it. We were happy to accept that. So let's move to the next year. Rest in peace, Senech. So we decided to look for another DDoS solution. So um, even if they were working on that, but we thought, nah, let's look for something else. Honestly, they were bought by Oracle. That's also one of the reasons. And Digital Shadows. The next thing we also said, no, it's not, not that good. So we, we introduced three new tools in 2021, um, Secure Code Warrior. We did code training before with our developers, but we have like 400 developers. We were doing in-house training. You could train 10 to 12 developers for two days, and this was just not scaling. The only thing that was scaling was my budget, but it really did not help. And then you have developers, you make training for JavaScript and they say, yeah, but we do everything in Bo Go and the next one, come. we do everything in Ruby. And you think, yeah, it's not, it's not relevant enough for them. Even if they all said the training is good, it should be relevant in their language. So that's where Secure Code Warrior comes in. Cloudflare, DDoS, quite good. So we replaced it and we introduced Lazework, cloud native security. So let's look at, um, at our code training. So when we bought that, it's a SaaS training platform, fantastic. We showed it to the CTOs of all these AWS teams, like a room like full of that, of people, CTOs, and all said, that's fantastic. We have no time for that, honestly. We have everything, but no time. So you can introduce that like in, in nine months or 10 months. And I thought, this is, sorry, this is shit. We have to train people. So we came up and that was last October. This is the security awareness month usually. So we said, okay, we pay out 5,000 per vulnerability in the 20 minutes program. So let's do, uh, let's partner with a charity organization. And within that month, for every hour that a developer is on the platform and trains, I will plant a tree. So somewhere in Borneo, so that the, the orangutans have a good life. 
And this worked quite well. And then we have a famous TX conference, a tech conference every year. And we, ha we started that uh, Hack the Future um, tournament. So you can do tournaments within that so they can compete to each other. And the first 10 could win in Oculus Quest 2. Oculus Quest 2, so these metaverse, even if I'm not a Facebook guy, but these things are quite, uh, quite good. And one costs around 480 Swiss francs on Galaxus. So if you buy 10, it's less than 5,000. It's less than one vulnerability we pay out to some random person uh, wherever in the world. Um, so we thought that's a good thing. We did that. So there's Groot. Groot is representing the tree. So we did the, we did first the campaign. And even if no one had time at all, they were training, so almost 300 hours in total. That's quite good. We, we did not onboard all the developers, just a couple of them. But the interesting thing is the statistics. So people do that on Friday, wherever. Um, they do that on the weekend. And uh, no one had to pay them to do that on the weekend. That's fantastic. And we came up to, to, to 180. And then we did the tournament. And then people were going crazy and trying to compete to each other without enforcing anything. So this was a fantastic learning. So you can encourage people doing that. And I would love to continue doing things like that. Do it for good. So as a company, do some charity. People really care about the planet and uh, they learn something. What no one realized is that we um, took the real findings from our bug bounty programs. We came back and crafted courses so they were trained on vulnerabilities we found in the bug bounty programs. So the one who is doing Golang trained for the findings we had on their platforms in Golang, the other in every other language. We could even do COBOL. Um, I'm more a scripter, I'm more the bash guy, but I also did that uh, in bash, the training. And then I posted it everywhere, please beat me. No one may be worse than me. Everyone beat me. So uh, that's a good thing. Uh, the next thing that we introduced was lace work. So our XDR is missing the Kubernetes layer. And we looked at a couple of solutions and all of them were not that good. So we decided to partner with a couple of companies, but lace work is the one that looked most promising. So you have an easy onboarding. It's a cloud native tool. It's not from a traditional security vendor. So with that, you just collect with agents with access to CloudTrail and the, the resource. You collect all the data. It's running through some kind of behavior-based machine learning. If a new event pops up the first time, you get an alert. It's, it's cross-correlated with some kind of uh, threat intelligence. And if you are OK with the alert, it will never show up again. So after some noise in the beginning, it drops down, and you get only a few alerts uh, per week. And then. If someone really tries to get in, it is throwing a lot of alerts. So you see that immediately. So this is, for example, from one container, uh, a Python Yum running. Um, I'm not sure if it, with root privileges, I guess. So this is how such an alert looks like. So you get really deep insights. It's a little bit like an EDR, but it's, it is not an EDR. It's different. And what they also provide is IAC scanning. So we do SaaS scanning for like our products that we have. So all everything that is written in JavaScript, we do SaaS scanning, but we have Terraform as the code for our infrastructure. So and uh, what they do is they scan the Terraform code and they have like a little GitHub bot or GitLab bot running, like Dependa bot for those who know that. So as soon as something is found, it just raises a pull request automatically. So you have automatic scanning of your infrastructure code and it asks for remediating it. So the DevSecOps, so the DevOps team, they don't know that they do DevSecOps actually, but they do. They get the pull requests uh, to remediate the, the, the issues. And that's the beauty about infrastructure as code. If you have code, you can scan it, you can run patterns, and that's fantastic. I love that. Um, so now we are th at this year. So it's getting a little bit thin. The first thing was sign it with FastPass. We still struggle. You've seen that before. I have to enter a password. I hate it. It's still working. 
passwords are the evil thing of of the internet so with a fast pass you can get rid of that if you have a device that is managed by our mobile device management that has edr on it i trust it but you have to do something additionally like an mfa like a touch or something biometrics but the password is not adding any value at all so we decided that we move to okta fast pass I know Okta has been breached, so let's talk about that in a minute. But uh, uh, you can do passwordless sign-in. So if we look at that, that's how it looks. If you go to to that uh, fast pass, I even don't enter the the username anymore. It recognizes my device. If I go to Google, wherever I go, and have to authenticate, um, it's only uh, Okta Verify that is opened. So I have to do my fingerprint. That's easier for the people. And if you do any phishing attack, people are confused because they don't know their password. So that's a good thing. Even if it might have some other flaws, but not being able to do any phishing at all anymore really helps a lot. So, okay, let's move to Lightspin. Um, Lightspin is a Israeli startup very early stage, but really worth looking at it. So what this is doing, it's more scanning your AWS or Google infrastructure or Azure infrastructure, and then it maps attack paths on it. So what might happen here? It's an AWS key. If you are in the cloud, you find out that keys and roles and identities are the new thing. So it finds that there, if someone is able to attack that AWS key and gets access to that, there's that GitHub runner account that somewhere behind it has administrator access. So these are new type of attack paths. And what it allows is then it uses guardrails and gives you the Terraform code, again code, how to remediate it. So it's semi-automated. So it's not that like the developers use that, uh, uh, but they copy that, they read that, they understand the code, put it in their, in their IAC, run it, and then it's fixed. That's the beauty of infrastructure as code. You could also take the IAM policy directly. So with that, we already found a couple of things. So this is fantastic. And the, and the third thing that we do, it's a startup even more early called Resonate, where we have a design partnership. They are only doing identity. So they try to find risks with identities, cloud identities. It's very important. So what they do is um, they scan, for example, your cloud trail, your identities. They see, for example, it's also working with Okta. Let's say Andrea Schneider. He, he has like asterisk privileges, but he only uses ABC. So it recommends to reduce the privileges to ABC. The user will have no impact with that because he's only using ABC, not asterisk. So it's finding over permissive privileges, cross correlating that with threat intelligence. But the idea is really to reduce the attack vector that someone could misuse AWS keys. And this is something what we see a lot that this is the upcoming thing trying to abuse um, cloud identities. So it's quite cool what they do. Um, but they were very early stage, so we we built the product together with them. And that's almost it. So if we look back, um, we still work with a lot of other startups. So I really recommend work with startups. There's a fantastic community out there. Um, I wanted to show you that graph. This is the amount of incidents we had since 2016. Um, where we had to manually take care of, like run a manual playbook, hire SCRT to help us out of the problem, or other security companies. We work with a couple of them. And you see that it's going up until 2019. And we introduced a lot of things already in 2019, but it takes time to see the effect of that. But you see, since 2019, end of 2019 and 2020, it's really going down. So um, it's like Google always advertises things like 10x. It's 10x going down. It's really, we, uh, we have less than 10% of the incidents than we had in the past. So we had 
like every day we had an incident we had to do, take care of. Now it's getting very quiet. We have like two or three. So this month we had one. That's the Okta one. But it's not something where we can really do a lot about it. But it's an incident that we have. So it's really going down. And you see the pandemic didn't change anything at all. So all my peers I talked to, oh my goodness, it's going like crazy, incidents going up. And I thought, no, it's not. I don't know why, but it was going down. But we, 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 we are not finished with the zero trust architecture, but we had so many elements in place so that also Thanos, um, maybe it has to do with that, but we did not see the impact on that side. So that's something I wanted to really uh, show. So important thing my takeaway, and then you can roast me. Um, you have to have trust. If your board, your manager, or whatever, doesn't trust you, forget it. Then it will not work. Wait for that 20 minute incident, then they will trust you. So take that, really misuse every incident to really place your security in there. Even if it's not a real incident, you have to be bold there to do security. Grogu and the cloud. So I did not believe it. In, in, I, I have a banking background and I was always like this uh, agile thing and so on. I don't know the cloud. Honestly, it's so fantastic. It speeds up everything, even if you have to rethink a couple of elements of security. One thing is sarsify your security stack. So you don't have to rebuild everything by yourself. The beauty of SaaS is you can scale up, scale down. You can pick something if it's good. If you don't like it, throw it away. That's what's good about um, uh, the SaaSify and your mindset. It's, it's all up there. So you have to really rethink what is good and don't look what others do. Um, everyone usually knows what would be the right thing. So if it's Thanos and getting rid of, I don't know, Microsoft, then that's a way to go. Um, and then it's a question of waiting for the right incident to propose maybe that problem. Thanos, like I said, zero trust is so cool. Everyone is talking about that. Even the ones who have absolutely no idea what zero trust really is. But there are good, good papers from the NIST. Take a look at that, what zero trust is, what Google is doing. Also, Microsoft is doing a lot, very good work on that. So look at that and go to zero trust. That's a really important step. And my last one is work with security startups. What we learned is that if you wait for Beyond Corp from the big companies like Google to have the product ready for you, it takes years and then it takes years for you to implement that. But there are already so many fantastic vendors out there. So we work a lot with Israeli um, security companies because they have really top-notch people. Most come from the intelligence agencies, but they are really good. Um, they create defending tools. They are not perfect, but they will go an extra mile However small you are, they will go the extra mile for you to build the product that fits perfectly into your ecosystem. And if you go to the large ones, they might even don't know where you are. Sweden, Switzerland, all the same. So they might more um, see you as a number, the small ones see you as a partner. So, and now you can challenge me, ask questions. I'm not a Twitter guy, sorry. So I'm almost only active on LinkedIn. And that's the LinkedIn QR code. You may scan that or not. So, but always happy to discuss that uh, also afterwards. And sorry for the problems in the beginning. So, just happens. So, questions? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you please, first of all, give a round of applause to yeah. Andreas for sharing. Thanks for sharing this amazing journey with us. Yeah. Uh, and we are sorry for the problem. So you are not, you have yeah, nothing yeah, to do good. with it. <laughs> uh, who was, uh, yep. There is a great documentary right now about the Googles and how they treat our data, where we have to be very careful of what we leave on the search engine because they are able to see or to know exactly what, who we are. And I'm surprised to see that in your situation, you go, you run with the Google and you give all the data to these big companies. How can you just give, have a such 
strategy and we have to be careful about our security or our our own data yeah so um we discuss that quite a lot so shall we partner with google um, Google is one of the largest advertisement companies in the world and they earn their money with advertisement, that's true. If you take, for example, Google Workspace Enterprise, they do not, so at least, at least they claim they do not use the data for that. Maybe they do that. But honestly, um, it's like the decision if I go with a Sysmon, Splunk and rebuild it by myself or do I trust a vendor? I have no idea if cyber reason is maybe taking that data, is doing some intelligence over it. Um, but it's more speed, it's more relevant for us. So the threat outside. So if you take the news part of our company, so we have investigative journalists there. So they do, they do, um, investigations about Russia, Ukraine. That's quite relevant right now about the NSA about the Mossad, about uh, extremists in Switzerland. So they are threatened all the time. So trying, so losing data to Google is okay for us. That's actually really the take. We accept that, but we prefer the speed and the protection we get on the other hand. But yeah, it's an accepted risk. Uh, yep, uh, we have a question here. Thank you very much for this very interesting talk. Uh, we've been in touch in 2015 when everything started. Uh, I got two questions. One is, how do the 179 trees compare to the um, 20 minutes papers which are thrown away in the evening? And uh, the more serious question, what is your process for picking all your solutions? So I've seen lots of n new names, some names known to me, Workday, Okta, Cyber Reason. So why them? Why are not others? What is your process to s decide this startup, but not that startup? That's a fantastic question. So it's difficult to answer. So if we look at Workday, we really do traditional RFPs. So, but we are not, as a company, Tamedia has a history of doing really hard decisions. If we find out, well, we don't need that 50 journalists anymore, we just fire them. That's a brutal reality. So it's, it's, if you are in the, pro private sector, you have to survive. And the numbers, uh, honestly, they're not going up. We are not a hockey stick company. Uh, the company tries to survive. So money is everything. So there are brutal decisions that are being made. And one thing no one can afford is um, that it would become too expensive. Then it doesn't work anymore. And the second thing is that we could get hacked. Um, so it's really like we do Bold decisions like doing Workday. Workday was cheaper and the better product at the time. If we go to security companies, I'm, I, I don't know why, but I have a strong network to a lot of uh, startups. I, it's more a community so that people know each other. It's especially in the Israeli startup ecosystem. There are so many. If you know one. One person there. Everyone knows everyone. So it's often out of recommendations. We look at that or I ask someone whom I trust and ask, hey, do you have anything? So for example, we look at a company called Sternum right now. Not sure if we will work together, but they have, they have a new technology for IoT security. We need that in our printing centers. I, you can't install anything on a printing machine. So we need something else. And they come up with some good technology there. And it's more or less not that I am looking out for these, but they come to us, the startups, as they know we work together with startups. So when we started once working with a startup, all the other startups came to us and showed what they are doing. And upon that, we usually then look for that. But there is no real formal process for that. I, I have to admit that. So it's a no. Yeah. Thank you. Be because honestly, if, if we do, would do a formal process, we would look at how many customers do you have? Sorry, you're out. And sometimes it's like, yeah, we have like uh, two design partners, we have no customers. And then it's for me, it's like, yeah, but we get a better discount and that's good. So let's take a look at that. So, and I can do that. 
Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, we are yeah. going to have to end it here. So thank you very much, Andreas. And if you have uh, any questions, so don't hesitate to uh, grab Andreas at the coffee machine and yep. ask, the, ask him about Okta. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, ask me about Okta. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>